Hey guys, Charles Jager for Tuts Plus. Today I'm going to show you how to render, export, and upload a 360 degree 3D video to YouTube. This is what YouTube refers to as a virtual reality video. Effectively, this is just like a 360 degree video, but it's also going to have a 3D element to it. And the way this is achieved is by exporting your animation from two different perspectives, one for the left eye and one for the right eye. And when you watch the animation back on a device such as Google Cardboard or an Oculus Rift, this is what gives it the 3D perspective. Today I'm going to be working in After Effects and using the plugin Skybox Studio. Alright, let's get to it. What I've got here is basically a 3D scene that I've built using Element. I'll go ahead and show you here what that looks like. Jump into the Element interface. Alright, you can see I've got these low polygon islands set up here with some clouds. And what I want to do is I want to create a camera animation that flies through and over this first island here. And when we render this in 3D, this is going to give us some cool 3D parallax because we're traveling really close to these objects. But I just want to give you guys a sense for what the scene looks like. I'm going to close this out. And I've got a composition here. Let's check the composition settings. It is 1080 by 1080 and that's what I recommend if you're going to do a 360 degree video on YouTube and Skybox actually requires that you have your composition be a one to one aspect ratio. So that's what I've got here. Click OK. And now that I've got my scene built, I'm just going to go ahead and run the Skybox animation script. So I'm going to go to File, Scripts, Skybox Creator. I'm going to make sure my main composition is selected and check that I am using 3D plugins. And the other thing I want to do here is check on a 3D null camera control. It's going to give me a 3D null object that I can control the camera with. And since I'm going to be moving the camera around in this, it's going to make things a lot easier. And in order to do a 3D export, I highly recommend using a 3D null because it's just going to make things a lot easier. So I'm going to click Generate Skybox Output. All right, now that that's finished, I'm going to close out of this dialog box. And now we can see the skybox output composition that's been created here. This is basically the equal rectangular map of our animation. So now I'm going to jump back into my main composition. And now we can see the camera setup that we've got. I'm going to pull this up just so we can preview it. We've got six different cameras here that have been created by skybox. And we have the master camera that's giving us the preview here. And I've got the skybox master camera controller. So while I have the Skybox Master Camera Controller selected, I'm going to hit P on the keyboard to create a keyframe there. And I'm going to go to the end of my animation here. And now, I'm just going to drag this down so we can see a little bit better here. I'm going to move this null position forward. It's going to move our camera rig. You can see we fly right over that island there. It's going to give us some cool 3D parallax when we render this out. So I'm just going to go back here. I'm going to check my camera looking down, make sure nothing's getting cut off. That looks good. I'm going to hit Control Z to reset that. And remember, if you have anything getting cut off with Element here, under Camera Cutoff, just make sure that's set to 1. And that'll make sure nothing gets cut off there when you get really close to the camera. I'm going to go ahead and do a RAM preview of this animation now. Now we can see the camera's moving slowly above the island here. It's just what we want. And that's going to give us some really cool parallax when we move really close to that island there. All right, that looks good. Now I'm gonna jump back to my Skybox output composition. Since we've animated the camera now, I need to refresh this. I'm gonna go to File, Scripts, Skybox Creator. Select my world composition there. Make sure you check on that you have a 3D null and camera controller, because if you don't check that, it's actually gonna get rid of it and you're gonna lose your camera animation. So just make sure you always check that if you've already used that once before. Now I'm gonna click Refresh Skybox Output. I'll take just a second. I'm gonna close this out. Now I can scroll through here. And now we should see there's our animation moving forward above the island. Everything looks good. There's one more thing we need to do here. On the Skybox converter for the output frame width, we need this to be 3840 because that's what YouTube recommends for 360 degree video. All right, now we're ready to export the first part of our animation. So I'm gonna go to the render queue, my project. Under the Skybox output folder, I'm gonna drag the world Skybox output there. And I always like to export from After Effects as a high-res QuickTime file. So I'm going to click this. I'm going to go to Custom, QuickTime, Photo JPEG at 95. Click OK and OK. I'm going to rename this. Now the thing to remember here is this is going to be the first of two renders of our animation from slightly different perspectives. So this first export, I always like to call that the left eye perspective. So I'm just going to name this world underscore left eye. I'm going to click Save, and now I'm going to click Render for our animation, and I'll speed this up just for the tutorial's sake. All right, now that the export's finished, now we can work on rendering out the right eye animation. 
But before we do that, I highly recommend you save an alternate copy of your project. That way, in case something goes wrong in this next step, you can always revert back to it. So I'm just going to go to File, Save As. I'm going to save this as the underscore right eye. Click Save. All right now, I'm going to jump back into the main composition here. I'm going to go to a custom camera view just so we can see what's going on here. All right, now we're in the custom view. So effectively, I'm going to click on the 3D null object and we can see where the camera's traveling throughout the animation. So how we need to look at this is that's the left eye. So we need to basically move this a little bit further to the right to simulate the right eye. I'm going to go back to the active camera. Now, one thing to remember about parallax is basically the more parallax you have on something, the smaller it is. So a way to think about this is if you're looking at a skyscraper in front of you, if you close your left eye and then you close your right eye, the building's going to look like it doesn't move at all because it's a huge building. But if you hold a pencil in front of your face and you open and close your left and right eye, this is going to have a huge parallax difference on your eyes because it's a smaller object and it's a lot closer to your face. So that's something you're going to want to think about how much parallax you want on your scene. In this case, the islands here, I'm going to pretend like they're full size. So there's not going to be a ton of parallax. We just need just enough to kind of give that 3D feel. And so how this is achieved is by basically moving the entire camera animation a few pixels to the right. Now there's a couple different ways we can do this, but effectively we're going to need to move all of our keyframes a few pixels over to the right. Now just to demonstrate this here, I'm going to take a screenshot where the camera is right now, and I'm going to drag on the x-axis. I'm going to hold control when I drag just so I can get a little more precise. I'm going to move this over one pixel. And now if I toggle the screenshot, you can see just a little bit of movement. And that's about the right amount of parallax we're going to want to want on our scene. Now one thing to note when you do this, it's going to create a new keyframe. And so basically now we've just effectively moved the camera to this new point in time and not all of the keyframes have moved over one pixel. If we want all of the keyframes to move over one pixel, there's two ways we can do this. I'm going to delete this keyframe that we created. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the keyframes. There's only two in this case, so it's pretty easy. And while those two are selected, I'm going to move the current time indicator over one of the keyframes. It has to be over one of your existing keyframes or this won't work. I'm going to move over here to the position. I'm going to hold control just so I can get this exact. And I'm going to move this over one pixel. And so when I did that, since I had both keyframes selected, effectively moved all of the keyframes over one pixel on the x-axis. Now just to revert for one second. Whenever you move the camera over to the right in After Effects, I highly recommend doing it anywhere between one to four pixels. You can hypothetically move it anywhere from 1 to 10, but in some cases if you add too much parallax, it's going to spoil the effect when you view it on a viewer such as Google Cardboard because your eyes are just not going to match up quite as well. So I highly recommend just moving the camera over about 1 to 4 pixels. Now I'm going to hit Control z on what I just did to show you the other way you can move the keyframes over, and that is by just highlighting each keyframe. And right here in the X value, I'm just going to type in 541. If I go down to my final keyframe, where it says 540, I'm going to make that 541 as well. So basically what that did was shifted the entire animation again, keyframe by keyframe, over one pixel. And so this is effectively going to give us our right eye perspective of this animation. Now this can get a little confusing if you have to do this for an animation that has a lot of keyframes. Just be mindful when you change the value of your keyframes, make sure they're all lined up properly, because if this gets off kilt, this will kind of ruin the 3D perspective when you play this back on a 3D viewer. All right, now we have our camera set up. Let's go to the output here. And this step is also crucial. We're going to go ahead and need to refresh Skybox again. That way it exports the right camera perspective there. Let's go to File, Scripts, Skybox Creator. It's going to pop up this dialog box again. Make sure you select the right composition. So I need to select World. And make sure you check on if you have a 3D null and click Refresh Skybox Output. All right, now that's done. The animation is ready to be exported. So I'm going to go down to my render queue here. I'm going to drag down my Skybox Output. I'm going to export this as a QuickTime file as well. Photo JPEG 95, click OK. And now I'm going to name this one world underscore right eye. And I'm going to click render. I'm going to speed up this part for the tutorial. All right, now that our right eye perspective is finished exporting, now we need to combine the left and right eye animations into one video. Now in order to do this, I'm going to need to create a new After Effects project. So I'm just going to go to File, New. And now I need to import the left and right eye perspectives into this project. So I'm going to go to File, Import. I'm going to select the left and right QuickTime files. Click Import. Now there's a few steps involved here in order to create this the right way. I'm going to go through this step by step. So if you just follow these instructions, it should work for you. 
So basically what we need to do is combine the left eye on top and the right eye on bottom in one video. And the video is going to appear a little bit skewed. This is actually how YouTube recommends uploading the video for it to be compatible. So I'm going to run you through the process I do whenever I upload a 360 degree 3D video. First thing I need to do is grab the left eye animation. I'm going to drag that onto a new composition. I'm going to name this left eye comp. Now I'm going to grab the right eye animation and add that to a new composition. And I'm going to name that the right eye comp. And now we need to click on the create new composition icon to create another composition. I'm going to call this double. And I want the width of the composition to be 3840, but I also want the height of the composition to be 3840. Make sure the frame rate is set the same as our animation. In this case, it's 30. And for duration, I'm going to want that to be the same as my animation. So in this case, I'm going to set it to 12 seconds. And click OK. And now we're going to need to add our left and right eye composition stacked on top of each other into this double composition. And the easiest way I find to do that in order to get the perfect alignment, I'm going to right click and create a new solid. I'm just going to name this temp for temporary. I'm going to want to make sure I click make comp size and click OK. Now I'm going to turn on the snapping function of After Effects. And I'm going to click on the left eye composition that's going to be on top. I'm going to drag that into the double composition. And now I'm just going to click in the top left corner of my left eye composition. And I'm going to drag this up and you should see it snap into place right up in the corner there. Just like that when you see the red square around it. And I'm going to let go. And now I know that that's right aligned at the very top of this double composition. Now we can do that same thing for the right eye. I'm going to drag that composition in here. I'm going to grab the bottom left corner of it. Wait for it to be aligned. There we go. And now these are pixel perfect in this double composition. Now currently our composition is 3840 by 3840 and YouTube needs a 16 by 9 aspect ratio export in order to do a 360 degree video. So we now need to create a new composition. And I'm going to call this export. And I'm going to set the height to 2160. Make sure everything else is correct here at 30 frames per second and at 12 seconds long. Click OK. And now I'm going to drag my double composition into this new export composition. And now what we need to do to make sure our video is the right aspect ratio, I'm just going to select the double composition. I'm going to go to Layer, Transform, Fit to Comp. And that's going to pull that down, effectively skewing it a little bit horizontally. This may seem like it's wrong, but this is actually what YouTube recommends because when it, basically when it splits this video in half and wraps it in 360 degrees, the aspect ratio is going to be correct. So I'm just going to scroll through here to make sure everything looks correct here. That looks good. And you can see it's split right down the middle, and that's where YouTube's going to split it and effectively use the left eye and the right eye. It might seem a little backwards at first because obviously we're stacking them vertically, and when you watch it, it's going to be horizontally, the left eye and the right eye. But this is just how YouTube reads the video since it's 360 degrees. And now we're ready to export this out. So I'm going to go to Render Queue here. I'm going to grab the Export Composition. I'm also going to render this out as a quick time again. Photo JPEG at 95, click OK. I'm going to name this World Animation. Click Save. And now we can go ahead and render this out. I'll speed through this. All right, now that our double animation is finished exporting, now what we need to do is convert that QuickTime file to an MP4. And we're going to do this in Media Encoder. Now you may be wondering, well, why do we export a QuickTime file if we're just going to convert that to an MP4? Well, there's two reasons for this. One, it has to be an MP4 in order to upload it correctly to YouTube. That's what YouTube recognizes. But also, I like to export a high-res QuickTime file first because sometimes when I export an MP4, let's say our bitrate settings weren't set up correctly, it's much easier to export this out of Media Encoder than it would be to go all the way back into After Effects and export an MP4 from there if our settings weren't correct because MP4 settings can sometimes be very fickle on how much artifacting we get. So you may have to do a little trial and error to get the right bitrate. I'm gonna show you the bitrate settings that I use though. So let's go ahead and jump in Media Encoder. In Adobe Media Encoder, I'm gonna double click here to add my animation. I'm gonna select it and click Open. Now I need to set the output to an H.264 file and I'm gonna change a couple of the settings here. Now under default, the preset's gonna be set to match source high and this is pretty much what we want, but I do wanna tweak a couple settings. I don't have any audio, so I'm gonna turn off the export audio. And I'm going to scroll down here, and I'm going to check on Render at Maximum Depth. 
And under bitrate encoding, I'm gonna set this as a constant bitrate, and I'm gonna set this at 100. Now, if you have a lot of complex things happening during your animation, you may wanna bump this up to 150. That's what YouTube actually recommends. If your animation has a lot of movement, that way you don't have any artifacting. I've found that 100 is pretty satisfactory, and you may be able to get away with rendering as low as 50. It just depends on what's going on in your animation. I'm gonna check on keyframe distance here and set this at 30. And finally, I'm gonna check on to use maximum render quality and click OK. And now I'm just gonna select play to export it. All right, now our MP4 is finished uploading. Hopefully you guys are still hanging with me. We have one more step we need to do before we upload to YouTube. Luckily, YouTube makes this step really easy, but we need to inject a little bit of metadata into our virtual reality video. And I'll provide a link in the description where you can find this metadata app. You can download that for Mac or Windows. And once you have that download, you'll be able to inject your video with the right metadata. After you've downloaded the metadata app to your operating system, just double click on it. You might get a warning here, just click run. And that's gonna open up this metadata dialog box. Go ahead and click open. Navigate to where your MP4 animation is. Click it and click open. And now it's gonna say that no metadata has been found and that's correct because we haven't added any to it yet, but you're gonna to wanna to click on spherical. And then for a 3D video, you're gonna to wanna to click on 3D top and bottom. That's referring to the left eye on top, the right eye on bottom, and click save as. By default, it's just gonna add an underscore injected to the name. I just go ahead and keep that and I click save. That'll take just a second. It should pop up and say it's been successfully saved. And now your file is ready to upload to YouTube. Now on YouTube, you can select to upload your video. Make sure you upload the MP4 that has the metadata injected to it. And now that's gonna run through. While it's uploading, go ahead and go to advanced settings and click down here that it is a 3D video, and go back up and click Publish. And that's all there is to it. Now in order to watch your video in true 360 degree 3D, you're gonna to need to use Google Cardboard or another VR system such as the Oculus Rift. And now also, just as a troubleshooting thing, if your animation uploads and it still doesn't appear right, like you can still see the left eye on top and the right eye on bottom, you may wanna go back into the advanced settings and click back on that it is a 3D video. Sometimes that doesn't go through, but after that it should work properly. In the project file for this tutorial, I'll also include an After Effects project that has the double export template for the right, left eye, and the double composition. That way you don't have to set that up. You can just drag and drop your animations and export them out really quickly. I also have a link for the virtual reality video that we created in this tutorial. That way you can preview that. But again, you're gonna to need to use something such as Google Cardboard to see it. This is Charles Jager for Tuts Plus.